Hello, my name is Bill Goble from Exeter. We're now going to approach part three of our four-part series on getting good failure rate data. I know you enjoyed parts one and parts two. There's a whole lot more to come. In part three, we'll talk about common failure rate prediction techniques. We'll talk about part stress analysis and failure mode effect and diagnostic analysis, the two commonly used techniques. What is this failure rate prediction business? I told you in part two we need something better than just estimation. Prediction techniques need to be create, needed to be created so we could predict failure rates of newly designed components. Make sense? Yeah, we got to have it. There are three commonly used techniques that we see uh, in the automation field. The B10 data method, parts stress analysis method, and FMEDA. Now, B10 is based on cycle testing. It's primarily, therefore, as you could guess, mechanical or electromechanical components. It basically has no relevance to most electronics. The problem is the assumption, unstated, is that parts fail because of premature wear out. A cycle test is a wear out test. And the failures during useful life are only due to premature wear out. Well, that means the product has to be constantly moving. In fact, our analysis indicates if a part doesn't move for 10 hours, all bets are off. The assumption is no longer valid. Therefore, the B10 method is just not applicable to most applications especially in the process industries. Don't use B10 data. Parts stress analysis. Parts stress analysis were methods were created decades ago. The earliest was a standard called Mill Handbook 217. Many of you reliability engineers know it, especially if you started learning this stuff in the 1960s. Reliability engineering tells us that the failure rate of a device is the failure rate of the components if a component failure causes the device to fail. And that's just logical. MIL-217 has two methods, a parts count method, which is quick and crude, and a parts stress method, which is more commonly used, where there are formulas where you not only count how many parts it has, but you account for the operating environment and the application and do a little stress strength analysis with the formula. This method was very popular. In fact, it was kind of like the only method that people used for many years. I mean, there were other databases back then, but this is the one everybody talked about. However, Early in my engineering career, I remember reading papers comparing field failure data estimates to MIL-217 predictions. And the MIL-217 predictions were well known for producing failure data between four and 20 times greater than estimates. Eh, that's not good. And I'll talk about that in part four. As an example, this data sheet provided uh, to Exeta to do silk calculations had not only field failure estimates, but it also had MIL-217 predictions. Look at the difference between these two numbers. Manufacturer's warranty return estimates 1,237 fits. MIL-217 prediction 15,468 fits. Ah! It's over an order of magnitude. This is not good. 
It's no wonder. This, this, is a, this is a Scott Adams cartoon right here. Doesn't mean the methods aren't, don't have some value, but maybe, well, we'll talk about what might be wrong with that 15,000. The other predictive method that's commonly used today is called the FMEDA, Failure Mode Effect Diagnostics Analysis. Using a combination of methods, the part stress with diagnostic analysis with um, FMEA, all those methods were rolled up into one called FMEDA by a number of engineers. Um, and I, I was leading that effort way back in the late 90s. Yeah, I think that's right. To create this method because we needed something better. It's a study of design strength that generates failure rates, failure modes, diagnostic coverage factors, and useful life, and other important metrics. Using a component database, every component is viewed to see what the failure mode of the component does to the device, and it's all added up to generate device failure rates and failure modes. The problem with this, as is the problem with any parts stress method, is the component database. You know the old saying, garbage in, garbage out. If your component database isn't any good, the result of any parts stress method, including FMEDA, will be garbage. I just told you the component database is really important. If you're using anything like consumer or military data for automation equipment, it's doubtful if you're going to get any accurate results. How do we overcome the problem? We're going to talk about that in part four. So for part three, we talked about Failure rate prediction methods, the three common types. Don't use B10. Part stress analysis, the most common being MIL-217, and it seems to generate extremely pessimistic results, which kind of ruin all the benefits of optimization. And failure mode and effect and diagnostic analysis, which suffers from the need for a good, accurate component database. I thank you very much for your attention in part three. Stay tuned for part four where everything comes together. Thank you and goodbye.